My name is Patrick Taylor, and I'm a climate scientist at NASA Langley Research Center. I've learned a lot of things about myself and about the world on my more than 15 year journey through science. One of the most important lessons is that we live on an interconnected planet. This means that our actions affect others and the actions of others affect us. I know this may sound obvious, but my epiphany really was that our climate system makes this principle, this effect, operate at a global scale such that our actions influence the lives of people that we will never meet. Over the next few minutes, I'd like to share with you about how our climate system is interconnected and particularly how we're interconnected with the rapidly changing Arctic. If I could only choose one animation to demonstrate the interconnectedness of our climate system, this next one would be the one. This animation shows data from NASA's GEOS modeling system. What you can see here are the many important aspects of Earth's climate evolving together, connecting our planet. Whether it be the Saharan dust particles and the tan colors being lofted and carried across the Atlantic by the winds, or the mid-latitude storm systems, which are marked by these swirling cloud fields that are carrying air from China to the U.S. and air from the U.S. into the Arctic. Our planet is interconnected, and at NASA we're collecting data every day that illustrates this. I like to think of Earth's climate a lot like a puzzle with many pieces. Those pieces are the oceans, the atmospheres, the plants, the animals, the ice, and of course humans. From space, we've seen a lot of changes in these different pieces of the puzzle over the last 40 years, but no other region has really been changing faster than in the Arctic. The changes that we've seen in the Arctic don't only affect people living in the Arctic, but have impacts on both natural and human systems globally. Another way to think of it is what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Like throwing a rock in a pond, Arctic climate change has ripple effects with a global reach that affects our food, our energy, and our water systems, as well as our national security. One of the most iconic and consequential images of Arctic climate change is sea ice decline. Routine monitoring of sea ice began in 1979. The white areas you see on this plot show the September sea ice extent in each year uh, and the red line in front is showing you the, into the total area in each of these years. The data show that the last 14 years are all the 14 lowest sea ice extent years on record. Overall, September sea ice has declined by about 13% per decade, or 3 million square kilometers. That's roughly equivalent to the area of Alaska, Texas, California, and Montana combined. Significant sea ice loss has been a direct result of the warming temperatures in the region. One of the most talked about indicators of climate change is the increase in global temperatures at the surface. Global mean surface temperature has warmed by about one degree Celsius since 1880. Uh, on this animation, the warming signal is shown by the increasingly red colors. You know, more striking than that trend is that the 20 warmest years on record have all occurred in the last 23 years, all since 1998. So this means that a 23 year old and a 100 year old have both lived through the 20 warmest years on record. These increases in global temperatures are a direct result of increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide resulting from human activities, and in particular, the burning of fossil fuels. There's also evidence here that shows that not everywhere on the globe is warming equally. You know, that's why you see these some red and some blue splotches around. The Arctic is actually warming more than twice as fast as the rest of the planet, and that's shown here by this red cap feature that you can see on the top of the map. So more warming in the Arctic uh, isn't just affecting sea ice, but it's also affecting ice and snow on land. NASA's GRACE data has shown Greenland has lost a significant amount of ice around its edges while accumulating a little bit of extra snow in its interior. Since May 2002, the Greenland ice sheet has lost an average of 281 gigatons per year of ice mass. To put that into perspective, that's enough water to fill more than 140 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. Now, instead of filling Olympic-sized swimming pools, this ice loss from Greenland fills the ocean. This has substantial impacts for all of our global coastlines. In fact, since 2002, Greenland ice melt has accounted for about 25% of global sea level rise. In closing, please take away with you that we live on an interconnected planet, meaning that our actions affect the lives of others, and the actions of others affect us. Human activities are putting CO2, carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere, and this is causing warming and contributing to a warming and melting Arctic. These Arctic changes are affecting people and animals that live there in the Arctic, 
but also have global implications to our food, our energy, water systems, as well as affecting global sea level and our national security. Our interconnectedness of our planet means that our actions affect more than just the people in our direct line of sight, but affect those we will never meet. Every day, NASA data is showing us just how interconnected our planet is. These data are vital to helping scientists solve the most pressing science questions to help society thrive on this changing planet.